so kind of moving on into our next session, we've got Roger Burnley up next, and he is amazing. He's an empowerment life coach, and he's going to talk to you guys about what he does, introduce himself, and also if you stick around for his session, you'll actually get a free session with him coming up. Um, so just kind of stay tuned for that, and we'll give you all the details. Uh, Roger, are you on? I am on. Let me on. Uh, okay, start my video. There I am. And now I'm on. Perfect. I am so happy to be here with all of you weird people. This is, <laughs> let me tell you why I'm saying that, because that's how I felt for a really long time. And this will completely make sense to everyone. Um, when Cheryl and Mercedes first came to me, I said, oh, great. I can come on and talk about coming out of the spiritual closet. And there's nobody better than me to talk about this because I've been doing it for a really long time. We will get to how old I am a little bit later, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey so you will all understand. And everybody who's listening, everybody who's here, you are here not by accident. I know that for sure. There's no act. You're going to hear stuff today that you needed to hear. And, and I know that everybody never ends up anywhere accidentally. Just like when I met Cheryl and Mercedes, I go, how could this accidentally be happening that I am finding a community that is so aligned with what I want to do? I mean, it's just the most amazing thing. So a little bit about my journey and why I say I was weird, because I felt that way for so long. Um, and I'm, I'll talk about it. I had a traditional kind of upbringing. I went, I had a, uh, a not traditional, I, I was raised a Christian scientist. And, and if any of you know that, that was already a little weird to begin with, because we believe in, in things beyond what was here and in a different way. So I was kind of aware of that. But then I started studying all sorts of other different practices. And it's so funny to be here in among this group, because every all the other practitioners, I've done all of your stuff. I and I know how valuable everything is that everyone here is offering because I have just done so so much of them. And so I want to appreciate that. But I do know that every single person is intuitive. Every single person has something within them that they were born to do to manifest. They just got to figure it out. Sometimes it takes us a while to do that. It took me a while to do that. Let me let me talk about this. Back in the um, in the eighties, I met a friend when I came to California. I live in Los Angeles. When I came to California, I met a friend, and then he said, "Listen, I have this other buddy, and we're doing a Ouija board." And I want you guys to get this because this is how, how strange this was. We do a Ouija board. And I said, that's really strange. I didn't know anything about that. And so I went to their place and I'm sitting down and they're doing the Ouija board and I'm writing down letters. And then we started doing this and we thought, this is very strange because we're getting conversations. We're receiving conversations from a Ouija board. I know that sounds really weird. It was. And so then this went on for a few years until about 1988, when one of the um, persons, one of the guys that was doing this, he died. That's what happened. He died, and then that particular connection was lost, and we couldn't, nobody else could do the Ouija board. So then it was left to me. I thought, maybe I can do it. Let me try something. And I'll, I'll tell you, it was really strange. But for the longest time, I never told another soul about this happening, I mean, except really close friends, but I never talked about it, not even my family. And a lot of you have that stuff that goes on for you that you don't talk to your friends and family because it seems strange and weird. Well, that's what I did. And until I figured out that it wasn't weird, this is what we're supposed to do, this is who we are, we come to earth as humans, but we have this spiritual aspect that we were meant to embody, that we were meant to hold on to. I just pushed it away for Ever. Let me read one thing that I have from this reading because um, years after this, my nephew actually, I was telling the story to all of them. They said, if this really happened, why didn't you tell anybody? I said, I didn't tell anybody for the same reason you're asking me the question. You are asking me the question because you don't believe it actually occurred. We all have these experiences in our lives that we think this is too strange and weird. How could that actually be happening? Let me read you this one. This is from, um, and this is this is important because this is from May of 1988. This is pretty much the end of this because the guy that I was speaking about, he died in, in 1988. But one thing that they said to me, the, the entity, and I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see it pretty clearly, um, but it says, Roger asked for a personal um, an overview of his present direction. 
Okay. Your effusive enthusiasm for living life is proving to be fertile ground for your unlimited creativity in boundless forms. And you deserve the recognition that will certainly be yours, certain because you are centered in the certainty of your own intrinsic beauty and worth. If there is an area of your experience that needs a filling out, as it were, it would be something I have referred to before. The spontaneous generosity of interest in the needs and experiences of others. Okay, so that's what I got. I tried to ignore that. <laughs> I tried to, pay, I didn't hear that. That didn't really come through. They did not tell me that. At the time I was being a performer. I thought that my whole deal was going to be on stage and I was going to perform. I was coaching and I was doing all of that. But that's really where I thought it was going to be. So this stuff didn't make sense. And they kept telling me, oh, you're not really in touch with other people. You could be so much more effective if you would open your heart to other people. Okay, understand this was 1988. I did not do that. I made progress. I kept going and it kept so then 1988, I decided I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my business, my career. I had no money. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that I had to change. I'm saying this because a lot of people now are in these places in their lives where they're moving through something where they're being what it feels like being forced to change in a particular way, being forced to move in a new direction. We're all opening up here for the same reason. It's not accidental that we're having this new, this full move moon event because we're all moving into new areas of our lives. We're doing it all the time, but this time it feels a lot more evident, prominent, um, important as it were. So then um, as I'm freaking out, as I've made this decision in 1988 to like completely change my life, I go, what am I going to do? And so they said, okay, I read an article in a business magazine. I had to read something in business magazine. So it wasn't this woohoo as we've been referring to. So, you know, maybe it made a little more sense, even though I'm the guy who just experienced the Ouija board. Still, I'm not accepting this strangeness. And so in 1988, after this, I decided after reading that article, it was on automatic writing. And on that automatic writing, I go, that seems really interesting. And what I read was this guy who was a business person, he was losing everything and he had to get some answers. So he heard about sitting down and just meditating and seeing what comes through. And he thought he would try it. And I said, okay, I'm desperate. So let me try it. <laughs> so I started doing that. And I started asking questions and I would sit there and med meditate every day. I'd been meditating for a bit, so this wasn't new. Um, I started to meditate and I said, let's see what happens. This, is this possible? And I would sit there with a pad and paper and a pen. Went, did it for a few days, nothing happened. I didn't hear and I didn't get it. And so, I just, but I said, I'm gonna stay with it. And I came back and then one day I started hearing. I, I said, oh, wow. And then I started writing and it felt like my hand was being taken over as I was writing this because I was getting out of the way a bit at that time. And so I started getting information and I, it freaked me out. And I said, who is speaking to me? Because I could very clearly get information. And it says, I said, who is speaking to me? And then I heard, we are another aspect of you. I need you all to hear this because you all have this. He said, we are another aspect of you. But if that's weird and uncomfortable for you, you can call us anything you'd like. And so I came up with the name Wilhelm. I mean, I didn't come up with it. As I'm sitting there, the name Wilhelm just came out and I go, okay, that's it. So since 1988, I've been writing under that name and I've been publishing things as um, under my website. I have a website called anyadvicefortoday.com where I publish my um, what I do every day, every single day. I don't, <laughs> I sit here and this is what I do. And it, see, it was strange. So I started that in 88. No one knew about it except a few people I let know until 2005. I'm saying this because a lot of people you've been holding back on what you're doing because you've doubted it and you've feared it. This is what I work with people on because I know this so well because I did it for so long. And so as I decided, as I'm starting to do this and receiving this information in 2005, um, someone came into my office and saw one of my writings on my desk and picked it up and read it and said, wow, this is really great. Who wrote this? And I'm in, I'm, I didn't have my name on it, of course. And I said, oh, uh, uh, I wrote it. And then they said, oh, this is really helping me. Can you send this to me? And I said, okay, 
fine, I'll do that. I'm still <laughs> feeling uncomfortable about it. Then more people started asking. And so I said, okay, I'll send it to them. I'm still not understanding <laughs> what's going on and what's coming through, but I'm trusting it. And then as I first started doing this, I recognized something. I was asking very specific questions. And I thought, this is not getting me anywhere because I'm controlling things. We all try to control our lives. We try to feel safe. We want to know that we're in the right place somehow. That's, that's what we're always doing. And I was doing that even in writing the question. So that's said, okay, it came to me. I'm so aware of what I'm doing. And so I started writing any advice for today. I'm not going to give them a specific question. That's what I say them. That's the, the voices that I hear. I'm not going to give them a, a specific question. I am just going to say any advice for today, and I'm going to see what comes through. And it still surprises me to this day because I can't believe some of the information, but it's always correct, except I don't always follow it. I'm being completely honest about that. And so as I started doing this, I've been coaching for a really, really long time, but I started in doing different coaching. I was vocal coaching and performance and all of that. Um, but then it became very evident and apparent that I was supposed to be doing intuitive life coaching. And I didn't call it intuitive because I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to know um, people to know that I have this ability, which we all have, and which I really want to encourage everyone to also develop and go into that. So um, years and years into this, and I'm saying this again, because we're all at this point, and it feels like we're on this, this pinnacle where we're about to jump off into some place we've always wanted to go, but somehow we're still holding on and we needed a pandemic to kind of push us there. Oh, maybe I can get it now. And so, but years ago, I said, I'm supposed to write a book because everybody told me you have to get out there, put yourself out there and write a book. I said, I can't do that. I'm too afraid. <laughs> so I said, perfect. <laughs> I wrote a book on fear, <laughs> overcoming fear. And what I'm saying is that this is what I've discovered. Anything that any person has had a challenge or difficulty or something moving through in their life, that's all through the gift. I've proved this so many times. I did it with my singing. I didn't even know that I wanted to do that, but I made a career out of it because I enjoyed it. So now what I do is in my life coaching, I my intuitive life coaching, I'm just asking questions because every single person has the information within them. They know what is there. And if you look at my message today, it's so funny. I wrote, um, stop pretending you don't know what to do. That's what I wrote this morning. Stop pretending you don't know what to do. We do that a lot because it seems weird, scary. Where are we going? I did it forever. But because I did that, because I didn't trust myself, because I didn't um, allow all of this to come through, that tells me I'm the person who is supposed to have this happen for other people. I'm supposed to help other people come to that realization. When I work with someone, um, I am asking you questions and what I'm getting in touch with are your limitations. That's really what's happening. Because see, I had them all. And so I can feel them energetically. Um, many of the practitioners here have spoken about energy and that's what I do too. We all have it and we just maybe develop it in different ways. Every single practitioner is using theirs in, in different ways and it develops in different ways. And I wanna say this, because it develops at the right time in your life. You have not lost anything. You have not missed the boat. None of that has ever occurred. Last November, I turned 70 and people say, what? I go, yeah, and I've had a horrible life. <laughs> but look, when you start to understand who you are and start to accept all of that and go with it, a lot of things change. Yeah, you can. You have longevity. You have a lot of different things that happen when you go into that place. But the funniest thing was was writing this book. I want to talk about that because I came a few years ago. I said, okay, I know I've got to move to this next level. So let me write this book because everybody tells me, um, all my mentors tell me, you got to have a book. <laughs> okay, I don't want to do it. So I wrote the book on fear. But now let me tell you how I wrote it. I wrote it by someone pulling me along. I had a friend when she knew that I was going to do this and she says, okay, I'll edit for you. And I said, okay, perfect. And so, um, so just let me know when you have the pages. She kept emailing me every day. Do you have any pages? Nope, don't have them yet. 
what are you doing? I said, I'm too afraid. <laughs> he I said, I'm too afraid. That's what went on. And so as I'm going through all of this, she's still every day emailing me, please give me pages. It was, and then I had it on my calendar every day so I could remember, you know, we pretend we're forgetting what we are supposed to do. We never do that. We're just ignoring it sometimes and we need help. I needed help getting there. And so I know that now what I do is I help other people come into this acceptance of who they are. And again, I'm not telling you, I'm not, a lot of people, um, there are people who, who have this great ability um, to be psychics and all of that. I'm not saying I'm not doing that. I'm doing my intuitive thing because that's what I've developed. I developed that because of the particular journey that I took because of the automatic writing that I've been doing for years and years. And so it allowed me to develop that skill. And I know everyone has one. So what I come away with is this, and I worked with this, um, someone yesterday, and I'll tell you, cause it kind of informed what I was going to talk about today. The, I had a consultation with a guy when he came onto the screen, I, he was, he was just so nervous and he started speaking and I got so excited and he's feel, he's sitting there like trying to tell me stuff. And I had to keep apologizing after this because I do this a lot. Um, he's trying to tell me of these things and he's really freaking out right now. He doesn't know what's going on. And I'm looking at him and I'm reading, oh, this is so exciting because you're just opening up to who you are. And, and, and then we went through, we did this whole session and it was just really quite wonderful. He's, I just received an email from him, how appreciative he, he was. But I knew that what was going on is that he was opening up. But when you open up to new aspects of who you are, it's scary. We, we, we carry it around. I've done it for years. The reason it's scary is because it's different and new. Most times we need certainty and the known. You know, we don't want to go into these unknown places. We've been carrying that one around since birth. You know, we left mother's womb, which was safe for nine months. And then we have to come out into this scary world. And we're doing that all the time. And I, I love this when um, Sierra talked earlier about begin again. That just reminded me and, and the lady she was speaking to. I have written begin again has come through so many times in my messages. I just went to my uh, my website and to the anyadvicefortoday.com and did a search for begin again. And it's crazy to see how many times over decades that I that sentence, that idea came through because there's something that happens to us. We think that somehow we're done with what we're here on the earth to do. We're not. Sometimes we're just starting. Sometimes we're just beginning and it never matters how old you are. My most inspiring thing was the other day seeing this, this woman who's 105 and she was talking about how she beat, you know, coronavirus. She was getting her, her vaccine and all. And, but what she did was she doesn't want to ever stop doing anything. So at 80 years old, she decided she wanted to get a job. <laughs> so she went to a grocery store and she got a job. She's still doing that job. And she drives herself back and forth every day. She drives five days a week. She drives back and forth to that drive, 105. I mean, it was just the most extraordinary thing. So you have never lost anything. You're not off track. You're always going in the right direction. How many things can I give you here? <laughs> you're, all, you're not off track ever. That's what's going on. So I don't know. We have. I have a few minutes left. Um, what I typically do is when I'm working with folks is I can, you know, ask, if you ask questions, I can kind of get an intuitive thing. It helps sometimes when I can see you, I get a little bit more, but sometimes I can do it even from just your voice or if there's a particular problem that you might be dealing with anyone. So whatever, however we wanna do this. Amber, what do you think? Hi, Roger, that is, oh my gosh, I'm just listening to you talk and that was amazing. Thank you so much, first of all, for all of that. Um, Thank you. We have someone in the audience who has a question for you and she's, she's hoping she can pop on. Are you open to that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. On here real quick. Oh, got. Let her introduce herself here. We've got her. Are you on here? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Amazing. First of all, I love your energy. I love, I loved your speech. It was wonderful. And, um, well, I'm a person who has been working in the spiritual path for about a year now, and I also wish to become a coach at some point. I would, it's 
I would really, really love that. But um, same as you, like I sometimes receive messages or um, by pendulum channeling, whatever form it comes in. But sometimes I um, like what you said, I don't always follow up on them. And mm -hmm. it kind of leaves me in a sort of like guilty place because I know all my guides and all my angels and whatnot are working for me to reach that place. But sometimes there are some things that I just want to like make that mistake and follow through on like what I had my head in. And I although I know that that's what I should probably do for my highest, you know, and on my per on my path. But it's just that like I want to make that mistake and I want to experience that. And I was curious if you've also experienced that and like, how did you cope with it? Yes, because you're thinking that you need to be somewhere else before you start doing the stuff that you're doing. You think you need to have achieved something before you can start effectively doing your coaching. Does that yeah. feel right? Not yeah. True. Not true. <laughs> What's going to happen is you're going to put yourself out there and you're going to attract the people who are dealing with exactly what you're doing, this, this not following through, doubting themselves and the whole bit. And so because you're experiencing that, you're going to help them. And the other thing that's going to happen is that because you're helping them, you'll be helping yourself. That's the way yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. And I know that like we always learn and our healing's never over and we're not complete. And then we start this, you know, coaching path. But yeah, I just I find, sometimes feel like, you know, there's so many like guides and beings that help us. And I'm just like, oh, but yep. like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, this is not quite the same thing, East, but let me tell you this. Okay. I remember some a long time ago when I was going to start coaching a different and um, um, different modality. Um, my coach at the time, my mentor, he says to me, just do it. He says, whoever is going to come to you, you're going to know more than they do. And so I said, okay, let me do that. And he was absolutely correct. Now, this was a whole different thing. But again, the people that you're going to attract are, are, are going to get so much value because you have been on your path for a while and they need someone like you to give them assurance. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Great. Okay. So Any much. others? Yeah, so we've got we've got quite a few messages. It seems like everybody's really, really resonating. Um, you know, so I actually have one here who's asking Kate. She says, I'm trying to find his other books published under the name he mentioned, but I can't seem to find them. Can he give us his pen name or titles of some of his other books? The uh, the books that I have, um, I'll put in in the chat too. Um uh, I have a, a link tree where you can go to and you can um, and get this. Let me let me do that in there. I, the book that is published that you can find on Amazon is called Overcoming Fear, A Guide to Freedom. And that is the book. That's the one that is there also. And in this link here, I have a um, because this because I know sometimes my stuff doesn't make sense to people. And so I have to explain it a little bit more. I have a, a, a little PDF of a book that I wrote a while back. It's a really short book and it's called um, Empowerment Made Simple, which is a program that, that, that I've created. And so, but it talks a little bit about my journey and why I, why I do the work that I do and how I came to that. So I'll put that in the chat here. Thank you so much, Roger. Okay. Close out. We've got a couple minutes here, a um, couple now mm -hmm. here, but I just want to ask you, you know, do you have any final words of wisdom, any any last empowering, like something you'd love to leave the group with? Yes. We have moved into an era, and this is why this group is happening. This is why we're all here. We have moved into an era where we're coming together and we're going to collaborate. We are coming together. We have unleashed in this new era, a more feminine energy, which is caring, which is about bringing people together, nurturing. And that's what we're doing. We went through all, we can see what we've done in the last several years. <laughs> we've just discounted and thrown each other away. And now that's all shifting. And so the people that are attracted here, the people that are here, why I'm saying that, um, no one is here by accident. And of course, we're not all here doing the same thing, but I do know that the people here and who are listening to this are here because they want to do some good in the world. And now they're feeling like that opportunity is upon them and it is. I was muted there, but that's beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much, Roger. And, you know, I think we've got a couple more questions in the chat here. Um, 
let me just pull up and see if I can find some of them. So mm -hmm. many people. Thank you guys, everybody, for being so active. Um, let's just see here. So we've got to do, do, do. Bear with me as I scroll. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot a lot about your book. Seems like everybody's, you know, really interested in all that. So I guess, yeah, we'll we'll send some more in the chat, uh, some more information in the chat. You guys can also find Roger through our website or his website. Um, Roger, would you mind sharing the name of your website one more time for everybody? The Burnley Method.com. Burnley Method.com. Right. And then he's also, we've dropped his his link um, to our Soul Connects page for Roger. So feel free to reach out, get in touch with him. I know um, everybody who joined this session, he would love to work with you guys and we'll be following up with you on that as well. Um, so thank you, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thrilled to be here and help. Yeah, thank you. We're so glad to have you. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we've got a couple minutes here. I just wanted to give you guys, everybody who's joined a couple quick announcements. Um, you know, as we move through these sessions throughout the day, we want it to be interactive. Continue to drop your questions in the chat. Um, and please remember that, you know, at the end of this, we'll also be having our launch party as a team where we'll be talking a bit more about us and the platform. And we've got that contest coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I just wanted to quickly talk about this next practitioner we've got coming on. She is wonderful. She's a good friend of mine. We've gotten to know each other really well. And she does things a little bit differently, um, kind of brings in a lot of different elements and modalities into her practice. Um, so just, uh, you know, to kind of give her the stage, um, we've got Kiera Kayan coming on here. She is an intuitive reader and healer. She also does a bit of astrology, a bit of acoustic records, um, tarot, you know, she's created her own deck, but I'll go ahead and actually let her tell you guys a bit about what she does and who she is before we get into this next session. Um, Kiera, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, can you hear me okay with the mic? Yep, 